Hello, my name is uh, Mick Calworth. I'm the CEO of Global Education Study Centres. And this is another video uh, in a series of videos I've been doing about studying and applying overseas uh, in countries such as the United Kingdom, Ireland, and USA and Canada. So now I'm moving on to studying in Ireland. Now, where is Ireland? Well, Ireland is a small, relatively small island uh, off the west coast of the main part of Great Britain. Now, Ireland as an island is split into two. The north part of the island, and you'll see from the uh, picture, the north part of the island is part of the United Kingdom and Great Britain. The south part of Ireland is a country in its own right and is a member of the European Union, just like Great Britain is presently. And the capital is Dublin, which is a very, very historic city. Now, all the courses in Ireland, uh, Southern Ireland, are taught in English. And therefore, students will require a good grasp of the English language. Now, there are many opportunities available. Um, courses such as diplomas, bachelors, masters and research programmes are available. And the sector uh, includes universities, colleges and private institutions. So there are, there are a wide variety of uh, programmes available and subjects. And Ireland uh, as a destination has world-class study facilities. Now, to do an application to study in Ireland, then you need to do your research or speak to people like me and my staff at Global Education. And you need to include in your application, which are normally done online, uh, all the usual things such as, such as your academic credentials, your passport, and the key one of the key areas is doing a statement of intent to study. Now this is usually around 500 to 1,000 words of why you're choosing your particular program, why you're choosing the particular university or college or institution, and what benefits you're going to get from doing that particular program when you return to your home country. So the statement of intent to study is quite a key uh, document and something I've referred to in the past uh, when I was doing my videos on UK visas. You can see my website address above my head uh, along with my email address and so if you need any help or advice on drafting a statement of intent to study please contact me. In addition to that you would also normally expect to in, uh, provide references uh, these will be academic or work references, depending on the programme that you're going to apply for. Now, all students would be required to do an English exam because the programmes are taught in English. Uh, those exams will be such things as IELTS uh, by the British Council, TOEFL or Pearson tests. These are standard tests that generally you can do online and you need to score the appropriate score to do the programme that you've applied for and those details will normally on, be on the institution or university website. Now when you're doing your application some private institutions will charge you an application fee. Normally that can be around 100 to 150 euros and you pay that online maybe by credit card or flywire or one of the new ways of paying international transfers of money. The statement of purpose I've referred to, um, you need to take your time doing that um, and when you've completed it, uh, it really does need to be checked and verified because that particular statement of purpose does form a basis for when you're applying for your visa. So getting it right and correct when you're applying for your institution is the forerunner for the statement of purpose you'll do when applying for your visa. So once you've applied uh, to the institution, uh, then you'll receive an acceptance if uh, all your academic credentials meet requirements, and then you will be expected to pay a tuition fee deposit. 
Now, course fees range from anything from 8,000 to 15,000 euros, depending on the institution. And it will be expected that you would try to pay a deposit towards that or pay all the fees. Uh, it's always good to pay all the fees. It's seen as a very, very firm commitment if you can possibly do that. Once you've completed all that and, and uh, paid your fees, you'll receive uh, an acceptance, which means then you can apply for your visa. Now, you apply for your visa online, and I've put up the website address, which is the Irish National Na Nationality and Immigration Service website. Now, in addition to paying your fees and proving you've got the money to pay your fees, you also need to prove you've got the living costs. Now, presently, they are set at a minimum of €7,000, but it's good to show that you've got more money than that. So I would recommend that you can show there is a minimum of €10,000 available and bank statements need to be prepared for a minimum of six months. So the bank statement needs to show good inflows and outflows of money, but a minimum requirement showing at least €10,000. Of course, you can have a sponsor, and normally your sponsors would be family members, such as your parents or siblings. Uh, if you're using anybody outside your immediate family, it then becomes more difficult because you've got to prove the relationship. So it's always better, where possible, to stick with family members. Now, when you're submitting your documents online uh, for your visa, uh, it is quite a difficult task. Um, there are a lot, of, a lot of information that you've got to include including all, all your academic uh, uh, details, uh, your offer letter, all your bank statements, any additional financial information such as liquid assets that you may have that, that should be included to support your application is very important. So if you need to know what I mean by liquid assets, please contact me. Uh, I do have a briefing sheet on that. Uh, now, in addition to that, if... Uh, you want to make use of what's called the Education Bond Island, Island. you can do that uh, by visiting the website and putting up now. Now, this removes the need to show bank statements. But I would always uh, state that use the Education Bond, but in addition to that, also submit your further liquid assets that might support your application. Okay, so... Applications are done to the institution, usually online, receive your offer letter, then you can apply for your visa and make sure all your financial requirements are in place when you do that. Now, once uh, you've done the application online at the website, uh, which I'm pulling up again, then what you would do is drop your paperwork at the embassy in country, if there is one. If there is not an embassy in your own country, then you would need to courier your papers to Dublin in Ireland. Now, it can take anything from six to eight weeks to receive an acceptance. You can track your application online uh, and you can go on uh, the immigration website and download information and, and check whether a result has come out. And it's very easy to track that. Now, Applying for the visa, as I've said, is quite difficult and it is always best to receive expert advice on this. Um, a lot of documents need to be prepared and put in. The main reasons for refusal are that students uh, are not seen as genuine and that they would not return home after studying or they have put in fake documentation, which you should never ever do for any visa application because information is shared around the embassies and once uh, you've been refused for Ireland, for instance, by fake documentation, then that information can be shared with the United Kingdom authorities or the USA authorities. And therefore you will probably be, be barred from replying to those particular countries as well. Um, if you need further help or information on uh, studying in Ireland, then my website address is popping up now along with my email information again. Now, the benefits of studying in Ireland uh, means you get a world-class education, readily accepted in countries all over the world, studied in English, 
In addition to that, you can apply for post-study work visas. Uh, and that means at the end of your programme, as long as it's an accredited programme recognised by the government, that you can then stay in Ireland to work. Uh, in addition to that, you're in the Schengen region. You can apply for Schengen visas to travel throughout the European Union, uh, where Schengen visas are accepted. So really, it's a, a fantastic destination and a growing destination for international students and highly recommended. If you require any further information, please don't hesitate to contact me where I can give you more details if you require those. If you've already applied for a visa and been refused, please contact me. I can help you on that as well uh, and help you prepare a resubmission to make sure you put a better submission in the next time. As with all these videos, uh, when you're applying for a, a visa, there are no guarantees. So if anybody says to you, I will 100% guarantee you uh, an acceptance of your visa uh, or your visa submission will be successful, then that is not true. Uh, nobody can guarantee you 100% success. But what I can guarantee you and my staff and Global Education is that we will put in the best submission that you can put in to sort of give you the best chance to get the visa. Now, if you have any questions at all, do contact me uh, or do visit our website where you, there, are, there is a, a contact form on the website as well. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, I will be publishing another one in due course regarding visas to Canada. So stay watching my channel and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.